need to wait for it. मेरे ख्याल में आप सब से रिकॉर्डिंग की के लिए जो है ये परमिशन मांग रहे हैं सो इफ यू कैन एग्री टू दैट ओनली देन वी कैन स्टार्ट रिकॉर्डिंग चलिए रिकॉर्डिंग स्टार्टेड सो बिस्मिल्लाह करते हैं जी ओके बिस्मिल्लाह रहमान रहीम वी डिस्कस द माइक्रो प्रोसेसर आर्किटेक्चर द अदर डे वी डिस्कस द internal architecture the registers we discuss how individual uh, what is the role of individual registers programmable non programmable register we also discuss the how what is the role of the flags what is the role of interrupt controller what is the role of serial input output controller what is the role of reset in and out today we are going to discuss the instruction set that the microprocessor actually work on and what is its actual uh, use how to utilize it what are different uh, operational instruction that the microprocessor act on and how we can use it to our benefit what do we have we have data transfer instructions we have arithmetic instructions we have logical instruction we have branching instruction just wanted to confirm one thing i uh, I remember I took one class on the instruction set previously, and discuss almost half of the instruction. Can anyone confirm that? No, sir. Okay, it's probably no, the other section. Anyway, so I'll be discussing all all the instruction. You you shouldn't have any issue with that. Uh, in case there is any, we can discuss at the end uh, of the lecture. So uh, what do we have in data transfer? We have between register, between memory, location, and a register. There is a direct data transfer to memory or a register. there is uh, direct data from uh, input output port on memory that can transfer to the accumulator similarly in arithmetic we have simpler addition and subtraction in logical we have not in r and xr instructions in branching we have jump and call subroutines we'll start with the classification of instruction in term of its size so an instruction can be one byte it can be two bytes or it can be three byte generally so one byte instruction means that you have both the operational code and operand in the same byte for instance you have move cab so the hex code for this is 4f we all understand one thing that an instruction this mnemonic mnemonics is actually for our own understanding this hex code is again for our own understanding the microprocessor actually understand the binary equivalent of this number so every time this number in the form of binary go to the control and timing unit it is actually transformed into action and what is the action in this particular case transfer the data of register a to register c similarly 8b this is also a one byte instruction uh, the code for this is 80 it means the a the contents of accumulator with register b and store the results in register a similarly cma is a complement accumulator this is has a code of 2f this is the code so cma what is its purpose what is its operation it actually uh, perform the once complement on the accumulator content similarly we have two byte instructions uh, in case of two byte instruction uh, one byte is the operational code and one byte is for the operand so in this case mvi a is represented by 3e and 07 is actually data so this is a two byte instruction every time you see a one byte number in an instruction it actually means the instruction size is two byte in total so one byte is usually your data and one byte is the operational code similarly we have three bytes instruction in this case uh, the data is usually 16 bit which means two byte and the operand operational code is again one byte in size so the total size of the instruction in this case is three byte this is the maximum size of an instruction we have other instructions as well but these are a few examples like uh, one byte instruction two byte instruction and three byte instruction so when you see two byte data in a particular instruction that means the total size of the instruction is in actually three byte so here jump has a code of c3 and then at 85 is actually stored in the next location and 20 in the next location this is the order in which they are stored in the memory we all understand that instructions are actually written onto the memory locations and then first of all the operational code is loaded and then the lower byte and then the upper byte 
So this is how the overall process is done. Okay, uh, data transfer instruction. What are different data transfer instructions we have in case of uh, the 8085 microprocessor? We have simple uh, move instruction, which is used for transfer of data from, this is the destination and this is the source. So it transferred the data from register R2 to R1. So the end, at the end of this instruction, both R1 and R2 will have same values. We are going to discuss these ex with examples after this slide. This particular slide is only kind of giving you idea that what are the total number of instructions. This is the list of instructions. We're going to be discussing them what, one at a time with examples. So this first instruction, transfer the data of register R2 to R1. The second instruction, transfer the data from memory to a register. When we say memory, so naturally memory has a 16-bit address. So how would you know which memory? This is a one-byte instruction. So naturally the address cannot be specified inside this instruction so when you see every time you see m that means the address is in register hl register hl is internally used by 8085 for indirectly accessing the memory location so if you have hl and hl has a value let's say 2000h so this particular instruction will transfer the value of 2000h to register r Similarly, when you say MR, so in this case, your register become the source and M become the destination. So it's transfer the data from register R to the memory. Now that memory is specified by register H. Similarly, we have instruction MVI. MVI mean move immediate data. So it transfer the data, 8-bit data to the register R to the memory. So when we say register, we specify whether it is a register A, register B, register C, or register D, E, and F, and HL. We have D, E, and HL. We don't have F register. Uh, similarly, when we say MVIM, comma, 8-bit data, this actually means we are transferring 8-bit data to a memory location. Which memory location? Specified by register, HL. Similarly, we have LDA. Instruction, LDA and STA are similar instruction you guys have previously studied in SAFE 3. In this particular case, LDA address, address is 16-bit address. Remember, every time we are loading something from the memory or we are writing something to the memory, the memory address is always 16-bit. So even if I forget from time to time, you need to understand the address of the memory is always 16-bit. So LDA address means load the contents of memory location specified by this address. Like if I say LDA 2000H, it means load data from 2000H memory location to accumulate. Similarly, STA address, so that means store. So in this case, the contents of accumulator is stored at the memory address specified in here. We're gonna discuss this more through example in the later slides. Here it is only the list, so I'm just going through them quickly. Similarly, we have LDAX RP. In this particular case, the contents of the contents of accumulator is actually stored at a memory location specified by register pair. In, for these two instructions, LDAX and STAX, they are one byte instruction because the address is not specified in the instruction. Only register pair is specified, so that can be B, C, R, D, E. So if I say LDAXD, that actually means that go to register DE, take the address from there, and drop the data from the accumulator to that particular memory location. Similarly, STAX means store. So LDA is for loading from the memory location specified by register pair, and STAX is for storing the contents of accumulator at the specified memory location. This is a new... Uh, instruction LHLD and address. Uh, you probably haven't seen it before. This is actually when you specify an address, 16-bit address of a memory. So it load two bytes from the memory, one to register H, one to register L. So this particular instruction means load HL with data from the specified 16-bit address. Similarly, SHLD, it means store, store HL register data 
to the specified address. So one is for loading and the other one is for storing. In this, this these the two are the instructions which are used to load or store 16-bit data rather than 8-bit data only. Similarly, we have LXI register pair 16-bit data. In this particular case, the immediate 16-bit data is actually transferred to register pair. So if I say LXI B 16-bit data, then the data is transferred to register B and C. The last instruction, exchange. This is used for exchanging the contents of register HL and DE. We're going to discuss that through example in a while. So these are the list of instructions that we are going to discuss that are being used as a data transfer instructions. Now let's discuss them one at a time. The first instruction, for instance, is move AB. This instruction means transfer the contents of register B to register A. This is a copy operation. So it doesn't affect any flags. Remember, the copy operation doesn't affect any of the flags. OK, so let's say we have this value, 9AH in register A, and we have 89H in register B, right? Once the instruction is executed, what happens? Register B contents will be transferred to register A, and at the end of instruction, both of them will have the same value. Remember, this move is not the move that you guys use in the windows, where it means cut and paste. Here, we, it is used for copy operation. So it transferred the value of register B to register A. So before the execution of this instruction, register B was having this value and register A was having this value. Once the instruction was executed, register B contents was transferred to register A. Okay. Similarly, there is another instruction called move M to C. It means transfer the contents from memory location to register C. Now, which memory location? Now, see again, here we are looking at the contents of register H and L, with H having 85 and L having 008. And register C is having 9AH, right? And we check out the memory. So, 8500H, 8500H is having value C2H, right? So this is the instruction. This is the situation. Register C was, before the execution of this instruction, register C was having value 9AH. And register HL was having value 8500H. So this is specifying this M memory, right? And then we check out the memory at this particular memory location. The value was C2H. Now let's execute this instruction, right? HL is referring to this particular memory location. So once the instruction is executed, the contents of the memory, which is C2H, is transferred to register C. So after the instruction is executed, you can see that this C2H is actually transferred to C. It's a one byte instruction. Let me repeat the whole thing again. This is the instruction move CM. It means transfer the contents of a memory location to register C. Register C was having an initial value of 9AH. Register HL was having 8500H, which is specifying M, this memory index, right? And then we check out what is the value at this particular memory location. It was C2H. So once the instruction was executed, what happens, this C2H was actually transferred to register C. So this is memory indexing or uh, memory indirect uh, memory addressing. So in this case, the memory is indirectly use specified in an instruction and the data from the memory is transferred to register C. It's a one byte instruction, but it is, it is able to access the memory. Now we have another instruction, move immediate. Move immediate instruction are immediate kind of instruction, which instruction having both the operational code and the data and the immediate data is actually transferred to register B. Once this instruction is executed, 18H will be transferred to register B. So let's say we have register B and the initial value in register B was actually 9AH. 
once this instruction is executed the contents of register b is updated and it's gone to 18h so 18h is transferred to register b and the previous value is actually overwritten we all understand one thing when we write something something inside the memory the previous value is gone it's overwritten right it's not that it's been taken care of or it is stored somewhere else no once you are right this value is gone you can't go back from here you can't go back from this situation to this situation so move a mvi b a 18h means once this instruction is executed register b is going to have 18h value irrespective of what value was there before the execution of this instruction. The next instruction is direct addressing. So in this case, the instruction is having the operational code and the address. If you look at it, the instruction is of size 16 bit, 2005H, right? It means load accumulator with the contents of memory location 2005H. So what's going to happen that the microprocessor will go to this particular memory location and whatever value is written there will be transferred to the accumulator. Now let's see what is the situation. Initially, accumulator was having a value 87H, right? And then we looked at this particular memory 205H. We are having 45H at this particular memory location. Once this particular instruction is executed, what happens, accumulator is going to have the value that was at this particular memory location. See, the contents of that memory location is unaffected. It is still the same. So let me repeat this particular instruction again. LDA2005H actually means transfer or load the contents of this memory location to accumulator. Before the instruction was executed, accumulator was having a value 87H. And once the instruction was executed, the value from this particular memory location is transferred to accumulator and, and you can see this is the final value of accumulator so again since it is written overwritten by this particular value the previous value is gone similarly we have instruction sta 2005 h this means store the contents of accumulator to this particular memory location. This is exactly the opposite of the previous one. This one was actually loading from this particular memory location. And this one is storing the accumulator value to this particular memory location. In this case, the value of accumulator was updated. But in case of STA, the value of this memory location is going to be updated. Now let's see what happens. Let's say accumulator was having 87H like in the previous instruction. And this memory was having a value 45H, right? So once this particular instruction is executed, what's going to happen is that this value 87H is going to be stored in here. So if you can see that 2005H is now having value 87H. See, the accumulator value is transferred to this location. So this is storing mean transferring the value of accumulator to that particular memory location. The, in the previous one, this was loading. The accumulator was actually loaded from this memory location. So in case of storing, the contents of accumulator is actually transferred to this particular memory location. So that's the fundamental difference between LDA and SGA. Next is LDAXD. Now, LDAXD is similar to LDA and STA in terms of its operation. The only difference is it is a one-byte instruction. This was a three-byte instruction, one-byte operational code and two-byte memory address, right? The disadvantage is that it takes more memory. This one takes only one byte, right? In this case, again, we are loading from the memory location to the accumulator. But where is the address? Memory always need an address. The address in this case is in register DE. So we have to check out what are the values of DE. DE, D represent the higher byte and E represent the lower byte. So we'll combine them, create full address, go to that particular memory location, load the contents from that particular memory location to the accumulator and the instruction will be done, executed, right? So at the end of instruction, what's going to happen, whatever 
is the contents of the memory location specified by register DE is going to be loaded to accumulator. Now let's see the overall process. See, let's say accumulator was having a value 2BH and let's say register DE was having 4020H. 40 in register D and 20 in register E, right? And let's see what is the value available at this particular location, 4020H. At 4020H, we have a value C2H, right? Now let us execute this instruction. So after execution, what we are expecting that this value at 4020H is going to be loaded at the accumulator, right? So this memory, See, it specifies this particular location, and this value is going to be transferred to accumulator because this is LDAX. It means load accumulator. So let's execute the instruction, and once we execute, you can see accumulator is now having a value C2H because C2H is the, the contents of the memory location specified by register DE, which is this. So this is going to be loaded to the accumulator. Now let me repeat the oral process. LDXD is an indirect addressing mode. It's a one byte instruction. And when you specify LDXD, it means that register DE is having the address. So you go to the address, you check out what is the data there and load that to the accumulator. So this once this instruction is executed, the content specified by register D is going to be loaded to the accumulator. So this is LDAXD. It's a one byte instruction. Similar. Sir, ye wali instruction fast ho gayi ya LDA wali zyada fast ho gayi? Well, this uh, there is a compromise on being fast or slow, because in one of the instruction you specify it directly, right? So uh, here we are not uh, discussing that which one is going to be faster. What we can do is we can check out the number of T states both of them take. So in your book, in the index, it is specified that how many T state uh, LDA takes and how many LDAX take. So naturally, yes, there is compromise. And I suspect that this one, this instruction might take more time. Right? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. because in this case, the address is not directly specified. So you have to first find out where the address is located and then. But check it out in the index table because maybe this is faster. The reason is that here your address is in the immediate register, which is inside the processor. In case of LDA, your address is outside. It is outside memory. So normally it takes more time to load something from outside. So what you guys can do is you check it out in the book and we can have discussion on it and we can discuss how different T states are performed. We can discuss that what steps uh, make sure that this one is faster and this one is slower. So we can do that uh, maybe on Saturday when we have that overall discussion with the whole se uh, session, or we can discuss it next week when we are utilizing it, right? So yes, this is so being specified from the T states. Actually, the design is made way back in, back in 1980. So whoever designed the processor, they designed the firmware, and they know which instruction is going to take how long. Right? So we can't make any theories about it. It is going to do exactly the way it was designed then. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is your check currently? Thank you. Similarly, we have instruction STAXB. So it is uh, exactly opposite of LDAX. LDAX was actually loading the contents from the memory location specified by register pair. And STAX actually mean store the contents of accumulator at a specified address, address specified by register BE. Remember LDAX and STAX, they can only use register BC and DE, right? When you write down M, that use HL. So you need to understand these are both indirect in addressing mode. They are addressing, they are accessing the memory indirectly, right? But when you write down M, when you see M, it means the address is in register HL, right? 
But in you, when you are using instructions such as LDX or STX, then register BC or register DE can be utilized, either of them, in either of the instructions, right? So they specify the address. Now let's go through an example. We have register A with the contents A4H. We have register BC with value 4020H, right? So these are the initial values of these two. Let's see what is the value at 4020H. At 4020, we have C2H, right? Since this is storing, so storing means that whatever you have in accumulator will be transferred to this particular memory location. So once the instruction is executed, see, accumulator will still have the same value, but the contents of this particular memory location will be updated. So STAX actually change the contents of this memory location to the contents of the accumulator. It is overwritten. You can no longer access the previous value anymore. So let me repeat again. STAX is exactly opposite of LDAX. You can do, use either register BC or register DE. They are called by the first name. So when you say STAX B, it means BC. When you say STAX D, it means DE, right? And what it does, it stores the contents of accumulator to in the specified memory location like it's been done once the instruction is executed. The contents of accumulator is transferred to this particular memory. So these were one byte instruction both, and it, they actually store the content, load and store the contents of accumulator to the specified memory location. The specified mean it is specified in the register there, either BC or DE. Next is LHLD 2005H, like I discussed earlier. This is a kind of new instruction to you because it was not in SAP3. So what this instruction does, it load register HL with the contents of this particular memory location. This is the only instruction with actually load two bytes of data from the memory, right? What memory? The memory is actually specified. It's a three byte instruction because two byte address and one byte operational code. Now let's discuss step by step what this instruction actually does. Let's say before the execution of the instruction, the value of register HL is 74F1H. Also, let us check out what is the contents of location 205 and 206. Now here, we're looking for two bytes, right? Why we are looking for two bytes? Because we have two registers where the data is going to be loaded, right? HL are two registers, so you are loading two bytes. Also, you specify one address. Usually, the first address is for lower byte, and the second one is for the higher byte. Now let's see what happens. Once this instruction is executed, see the contents of 2005, uh, H is actually transferred to register L, and the contents of 2006 is transferred to register H. So this actually load two bytes of data from the memory. Let me repeat again. LHLD 2005H. It's a three byte instruction. Again, it's a copy instruction, right? It's not arithmetic or logic operation. It doesn't affect any flake. So let's check out what are the contents of HL before the execution of instruction. It was 74F1H. And what are the contents of the memory location 2005 and 2006? It was C2H and 45H. We are talking about load. Load means you are loading from the memory to HL. So this is going to transfer to L, and this is going to be transferred to H. The first byte is for HL and the next byte is for H. So once the instruction is executed, you can see 45H is transferred to H, and you can see C2H is transferred to L. These are two registers right now, okay? So this is loading HL with double bytes, actually. Next is store HL data. In this case, the, it, it is exactly opposite instruction to the previous one. Again, a three byte instruction. Again, a copy operation because the data is copied. And again, two byte data transfer. But in this case, instead of transferring from the memory to HL, the contents of HL is actually transferred to the memory location. So what's going to happen? Let's check out what do we have. Before the execution of instruction, the value of HL was 74F1H. 
and the value of the memory location 2005 was a 4H, 2006 was 45H, right? Once the instruction is executed, so what's going to happen? This is our expectation that 74 is going to be transferred to the higher byte. F1 is going to be transferred to the lower byte. See, after the instruction is executed, 74 is actually transferred to the higher byte and F1H, which is the L value, is transferred to the lower byte. So this is storing two bytes of data to the memory. This is the only instruction which stored two bytes of data to the memory. In the earlier, this was the only instruction to load two bytes of data from the memory. So this is the process, again, storing the contents of HL to the memory location starting from 2005H. So HL was initially having these values, memory 2005 and 2006 was having these values, and once the instruction was executed, what happened, HL end up with, again, the same value. See, the value of HL is transferred to the memory, so that means the value of HL is not going to change. Only the value of the memory is changed. Initially, 2005 was having this value. Now it is having this value. 2006 was having this value, and 2006 is now having this value. So this is a two-byte data storage to the memory. Next is loading register pair with two bytes of data. So LXI B comma 1122H. So this is a two byte loading. This is a three byte instruction in total. Two byte data is transferred to register B and C. When you say B, it is actually referring to both B and C. Now let's go through the example what actually happens. Let's say initially both register B and C was having this value. 76 in register B and DA in register C, right? After this instruction is executed, so this 1, 1 is going to transfer to register B and this 2, 2 is going to transfer to register C. So once the instruction is executed, the contents of both the register will be updated accordingly. So this is an example of immediate addressing. Immediate means the data is immediately available in the instruction. It's a three byte instruction and it transfer two bytes of data to two register. B is specifying register pair. Next is exchange. This instruction, again, one byte instruction. You, when you don't see any number in a particular instruction, that actually means that this is a one byte instruction. Now what this instruction actually does. This instruction, before execution of this instruction, register HL was having value 1234H. Register DV was having value 56 and 78H. Once this instruction is executed, what happens, the values are interchanged. So if you want to exchange the contents of two register pairs, HL and DE, this is your instruction. This instruction, what it does is actually swap the value of these two register pairs. It transfers the value of DE to HL and the value of HL to DE. Okay, it's a one byte instruction, by the way. Now, next are arithmetic instructions. Arithmetic instruction here again is the list. And later on, we're going to discuss each and every instruction what at a time. So I'll just quickly go through all of them. And then we discuss one instruction at a time, similar to the way we discuss the copy operation. So initially, we have eight. In eight, we have five instructions in total. 8R mean 8 the contents of register with accumulator. R memory are 8 the contents of a memory location specified by register HL with the accumulator. In these instructions, everything is added, subtracted with accumulator, and the results are always stored in the accumulator. So one of the register is always accumulator. The other one is actually specified in the instruction. In this case, you have 8R or M. That means you add the contents of accumulator with register R with the memory. Similarly, you have ADC. Now, the difference between these two is that this is addition of accumulator and register only, or accumulator and memory only. In this case, it is the addition of accumulator carry 
in the register. So the carry is also added to the equation, right? The carry value can be one or zero, but it is, when you use this instruction, it is automatically added. So this instruction actually means accumulator plus register plus carry or accumulator plus memory plus carry. Similarly, we have a DI 8-bit data. Now, this is a two-byte instruction. These two were one-byte instruction because there was no number. In this case, you have to add 8-bit eight, eight data. So 8-bit is your instruction. 8-bit is the data. So in total, the size of this instruction is two bytes. In this case, accumulator contents are added with the 8-bit data that you specify. So just the accumulator plus the data. They are added, and the result is stored in the accumulator. Similarly, in this case, ACI 8-bit data. So in this case, the contents of accumulator is added with the 8-bit data plus carry. In this case, the carry is there, right? So two-byte instruction, two-byte instruction. This one, just the addition of accumulator with the 8-bit data. This one, the addition of accumulator carry in the 8-bit data. Then we have date RP. Now, this one was not also available in your safe tree. This is a 16-bit addition. Okay. What it does, it adds the contents of register pair. Again, register pair can be B, C, R, D, E. Right. The contents of register pair is added with the contents of HL, and the result is stored in the HL. So this is the 16-bit addition. In this case, the contents of HL is added with the contents of register BC, RDE, and the results are actually stored in register HL. Similarly, we have subtraction. In subtraction, it can be subtraction R, sub R. That means uh, subtract the contents of this register from the accumulator and store the results in the accumulator. R, subtract the contents of memory from the accumulator and store the results in the accumulator. Simple subtraction, you specify sub B, that means subtract register B contents from accumulator, right? Then the next one is SBBR. These two are one byte instruction because there is no number. As long as there is no number in instruction, it is a one byte instruction. So SBB means subtract the register contents and the borrow or subtract the memory contents in the borrow. Borrow is referring to the carry. So a carry value is also subtracted in this particular case. Then similar to ADI, we have SUI, which means subtract this 8-bit data from the accumulator and store the results in the accumulator. Similarly, SBI means subtract the 8-bit data and the carry value. SBI means borrow. So the carry is actually representing borrow in this case, and that is subtracted from the accumulator as well. Again, the result is stored in the accumulator. Similarly, we have increment R, which means increment the contents of register. This register can be any register. It can be register A as well, right? Or it can be increment memory. So whatever the value of HL is, it will go to that memory location, it will get that value, it will increment and store it at that particular location, not in the accumulator. Similarly, decrement is similar to increment. The only difference is increment was incrementing it by one. Dec DCR is going to decrement it by one. The same case is the, with the memory content. So it go to the memory location, load the value of that particular memory location, and subtract one from it, and then store the results back at the memory location. It is being performed by the microprocessor itself. Next is INX RP. In this case, RP means both register B, C, D, E, or HL. They will act as a register pair, representing a single 16-bit number rather than 8-bit number. So INX is used to increment a 16-bit number. Let's say register B is having value 20, register C is having value 00. So when you use INX RP, it will your result is going to be 2001, right? So it takes the whole data, the combined data, as a single uh, unit and increment it. Similarly, DCX RP, it actually will decrement the contents of register pair. As a single number, 16-bit number, it will decrement it by one. The last one, decimally adjust the accumulator. 
you know the arithmetics performed by the microprocessor is actually binary. So the result is going to be binary. But if you want binary numbers, you know it ranges from 0 to F rather than 0 to 9. So to adjust them decimally and get a decimal result, you need this instruction. We'll check it out using example, what is the actual impact of this particular instruction. Let's move on. So the first instruction is 8B. Now what it does, all the flags are affected during the execution of arithmetic instruction. Keep this thing in mind. All the five flags are actually affected by the arithmetic operation. Add and subtract, they are both arithmetic operations. Let's say, for instance, we have register A with value 9AH, and we have register B with value 89H. So once this instruction is executed, this is the first value, this is the second value. Like I said, the arithmetic and logic operation performed by 8085 microprocessor is binary. In fact, all the processor perform binary arithmetics and logic operations. Now, once we add them, so the, see, this is our result. Now, this is very interesting. When we add these numbers, see, after this instruction is executed, register B value still stay the same. Register A shows the result. This is the result, 2, 3, 8. Now, you will be wondering, we added two big numbers, and the result is smaller. Actually, let's check out the flags. We got a carry flag. You see? We got a carry flag. See, this is actually one, two, three, not two, three only. But since register A cannot store more than eight bit data, so we are having only 23 here, two, two three, eight, and carry is having value one. Now, see another interesting thing. See, when we add these, the first two digits and the four bits, when you added them, there was a carry from here to here. This is why we have auxiliary carry, right? Also, Check out the last bit. It is zero. So your sign flag is zero. Your result is non-zero. So zero flag is zero, right? And check out the number of ones. One, two, three. It's odd. When it is odd, the value of P is zero. Let me repeat this whole slide again. 8B mean add the contents of accumulator with register B and store the results in the accumulator, right? So initially, the value of accumulator was 9AH. The value of register B was 89H. Okay. Once this instruction is executed, this operation is performed. These values are added together, and the result come out in accumulator. Register B contents is not affected by this instruction. Okay. What happens to the flakes? We check out the 8 bit. It is 0. Sign flag is 0. The result is non-zero. Zero flag is 0. There was a carry from the fourth bit to the next one, from the first digit to the next one. Your auxiliary carry is one. You check out the number of ones, one, two, three. It's odd. When it is odd, the value of P is zero. When it was even, then the value of P is one, right? So the parity shows whether the given number of ones in the final results are odd or even. So when it is odd, the value of P is zero. When it is even, the value of P is 1. And then the carry flag. See, the final two digits, when they are added, there was a carry. So this is that carry. So this is 8B instruction and the corresponding impact on the flags. And let's move on to the next one, ADCB. In this case, again, register A is having this value, register B is having this value, and these are the contents of the flags before we actually execute this instruction. Like I discussed earlier, the fundamental difference between this instruction and the previous instruction is it is not only going to add A and B, it is also going to add the value of C, carry to it, right? So once this instruction is executed, the carry is also added into this expression, and then the result is calculated, right? So not only these two numbers are added, but the carry is also added, and once we execute this instruction, these are the results. So instead of 23, 23H, we have 24H now. That is register B is still the same. But remember, flags are all affected by this operation. So see, the last bit is 0, S is 0, 
result is non-zero, zero flag is zero. There was a carry between from the first digit to the second one, auxiliary carry is one. Now, in this case, look at the result. The number of ones are even, one, two, two is even number. So the value of P is one. And the carry is one as well. This carry is actually not the previous one. This is the carry that is the result of this arithmetic operation. Let me repeat this whole slide again. A, D, C, B actually mean A, the content of register A, B, and the carry. Like this is A value, this is B value, and this is the C value. Once they are added, the results is stored in register A, and these are the corresponding flags affected by this operation. Let's move on to the next one. A, D, I, B, 2, H. In this instruction, the data is specified. This data is going to be added with the accumulator and the result is going to be stored in the accumulator. Now, let's see what happened. This is the initial content of register A, and these are the flake status. Let's say, let's assume this is the initial status of these flakes. Once this particular instruction is executed, this value C4, this is C and this is 4. This is the contents of register A, and B2, this is B and this is 2. They are added together and the result is obtained. Once the instruction is executed, this is our result, right? So register A is having 76H, which is the result of adding these two numbers, right? Now, what are the flags affected? The last bit is zero, so S is zero. The result is non-zero, so Z is zero. There was no carry from the first digit to the second one. Auxiliary carry is zero. Check out the number of ones here. One, two, three, four, five. Five is an odd number, so the value of P is zero. Was there any carry from this addition? Yes. When you add this last two number, there was a carry, and this is that carry. So your final result is actually 176H, not just 76H. Let me repeat this whole thing again. This is the instruction ADI B2H, right? The contents B2H is specified in the instruction, and it is to be added with the contents of the accumulator. Before this instruction was executed, the contents of register A was C4H, and it is going to be added with this number, right? These are the initial statuses of the flag before we execute this instruction. So what we did, once this instruction is executed, this is the operation it performed. It ate these two numbers, binary, and this is the result, right? So once we add them, we got 76H in the accumulator, right? Then we check out the flag status with the corresponding result. The last bit is zero, S is zero. The result is non-zero, so zero flag is zero. There was no carry from the first digit to the second one, auxiliary carry is zero. The number of ones in the result are one, two, three, four, five, odd. So the value of P is zero. Was there any carry from addition of these two numbers? Yes, there was a carry in here, so the carry is one. So this was eight immediate instruction, a two byte instruction, and it ate the contents specified in the instruction with the accumulator contents. Excuse yes. me, sir. Yes, please. Sir, ye P ki value uh, one ke agar odd ho, even ho, iska hume kya fayda? Result mein even ho ya odd ho? Ah, uh, pe to koi fayda nahi hai. Lekin it is used for checking the uh, one bit error. Agar isme koi error a jaye na, to isse pata chalta hai ki yahan pe result galat to nahi hai. Agar P ki value one ho aur yahan pe number of uh, ones jo hai, wo odd ho, to iska matlab hai ki aapke result mein koi error hai. There was some fault in your system. Right, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So it only okay. confirm whether you have error It is used to detect one bit error. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Next is ACI 15H. This is a similar instruction to the previous one. The only difference ADI may is ko carry ko nahi consider kiya jata. Sirf is number ko accumulator ke saath add kiya jata hai. Only these two are added actually and the carry flag is not considered. But in this case, the value, accumulator value and the carry are added actually. That's the fundamental difference between the two instructions. This instruction is also a two byte instruction. Now let's see through example what actually happens. This is the initial value of accumulator 38H, right? 
and this is the value of carry. The, this value to be added to the accumulator is already specified. Now, 3 at in binary is written like this. This is 3 and this is 8, right? And 1, 5 is written like this. This is 1 and this is 5, right? This is the value of C. So C is added here as well. So all these three numbers are actually added by this particular instruction. So once the instruction is executed, this is our result. Now, if you see, this result is different from the previous one. This result is for EH, right? And let's see if we have a carry. Now, see these numbers. First, this bit is 0, so S is 0. The result is non-zero, so 0 flag is 0. Auxiliary carry, was there any carry from the first digit to the second one? No, so auxiliary carry is 0. How many number of ones are here? One, two, three, four. That means P should be one. Was there any carry from the addition of these two numbers? No. So the CY value is zero. Let me quickly repeat this slide again. What this instruction does is add the contents of accumulator with this value plus the carry. So this is specified A, and it is actually added with the contents of the, the contents specified with C. And when all these three numbers are added, the result appear in here, right? And this is actually the contents of accumulator. And if you see, this value is zero, so S is zero. The result is non-zero, so zero flag is zero. Also, there was no carry from the first digit to the second digit, auxiliary carry is zero. The number of ones in here are one, two, three, four, which is even, so the value of P is going to be one. And the carry, was there any carry from addition of these numbers? No, there was no carry at the last point. So CY is zero. Let's move on to the next one, DADB. Am I loud and clear to everyone so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good, great. And I'm not uh, teaching fast today, right? Yes, sir. But I yes, good, 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 good. Okay, let's continue. So yeah, DADB. This is double addition, and in this case, no flags are affected except sure. the carry flag. Double addition to hai ALU operation nahi hai. TK ALU hamare pass 8 bit ka hai. Or hum 16 bit addition ki baat kar rahe hai. So 16 addition bit addition actually accumulator mein ALU mein nahi hoti. TK na? It is actually performed by the 16 bit increment decrement register jo hai. TK? Or usse sirf ek flag effect hota hai wo hai carry flag. Right? What it does? ये HL को BC या DE के साथ add करता है, ठीक है? So date B actually means you add the contents of HL with register BE, BC, sorry. So those 16-bit numbers they are added together, and the result is stored in HL. In case you get any carry from these two addition, then the carry flag will be affected. Otherwise no other flag is affected by this 16-bit op operation, right? Let me repeat again. This is the only instruction. There is no 16-bit subtraction. Remember that. There is only one 16-bit addition, and that is represented by DAD. So it can be DADB, or it can be DADD. So register contents of HL is either added with register BC or DE. So don't know aid hoke, uska result, the result is actually stored in register HL. In case there is a carry, so carry flag is affected by it. Excuse me, sir, sir, H ke saath bhi ho sakta hai ye, dead H, Nahi. means H ko H ke saath aid kare. Uh, well, I think uh, we need to check out the compilers, but it is explicitly specified that register pair B, C, and D, E is only used here. Okay, sir. Okay. Next is subtraction. Subtraction of memory, for instance. Okay? Now, dekhe, initially, this is the status of the flag. Right? In this case, our contents of accumulator is, let's say, 20H. The contents of HL register is 8500H. Now, you will be wondering, ke subtraction of M means that accumulator say, aap memory ka data subtract and accumulator may results store. Kare. 
हम एच एल को क्यों डिस्कस कर रहे हैं एवरी टाइम यू सी एम इट मीन्स यूर एड्रेस इज इन एच एल एवरी टाइम यू सी एम वेर इज एड्रेस इट इज इन एच एल राइट so we check out this memory location what do we have at this particular memory location we have a value 08h so once this instruction is executed this 08h is going to be subtracted from 20h and the result is going to stored in the accumulator see this particular memory location specify this this location having a value 08h so once the instruction is executed this is what's going to happen the value of hl is not going to change only the value of accumulator is going to change right so it says 18h right and we subtracted 08h from it you might think that the result should be 12h why we have 18h you need to understand 20h is not 20 it's not normal decimal number right so when you subtract this from this let me do it binary in binary see this is what we have this is 2 0 and when you subtract 8 from it so this is how it works 0 0 0 0 right and in this case it will need a borrow from here so from 1 0 you subtract 1 you get 1 from here you will have 1 because when we when you have a borrow from this to this it will be 1 0 but then you have to transfer this borrow here so you will have 1 so 1 minus 0 you get 1 right so your final result is 18h this is binary subtraction 20h actually in decimal is equal to 32 so when you subtract 8 from 32 you will get 18h and 18h is actually 24 so that means subtracting 8 from 32 should give you 24 right it might sound a bit confusing to you because you are used to decimal numbers and these are hex numbers and this is binary operation so when you subtract a 08h from 20h your result is going to be 18h a specified by this and sorry i forgot to discuss the flags see the last bit it's zero so s is zero the result is non zero zero flag is zero there was a carry there was a borrow from here to here so auxiliary carry is one right auxiliary carry work exactly similar to the way we did in addition in addition it was supposed to be transferred from first digit to the second one in subtraction it is the other way around if there is a borrow from first digit to the second one the auxiliary carry flag is affected that check out the parity the numbers are one Two, right? So there are two number up ones. The value of p is going to be one. Even number up ones, p one. Odd number up ones, p zero. Was there any borrow from outside? No. The value of carry is zero. Let me repeat this again. Sub m actually means subtracting the contents of memory location, right? Which is specified by register H L from accumulator. these are the initial contents of accumulator hl register once the instruction is executed the data from this particular memory location will be loaded and subtracted from 20h the result is going to be stored in accumulator the contents of memory location is not affected by this operation only the flags are affected you can check out the result and verify your flags next is sb bigger number subtraction karenge smaller number se then you will have the value of carry equal to 1 because you will be borrowing something sir ye subtraction ye jo hai ye binary ye ek bar sir karna binary subtraction to aapki dlt or in fact ye binary arithmetic aap logo ne kaun si class mein padhi thi third or fourth mein sir wo to bhul gaye sir ye jo abhi mujhe bhi bhul gaya maine to takriban aaj se takriban 33 34 saal pehle padha hai so i think we you can have a look at that but let me quickly repeat zero se zero subtract karte hain zero aata hai aapke paas zero se zero zero again zero se zero zero theek hai yahan pe zero se one nahi subtract kar sakte so isse baro lenge ye zero hai se baro nahi le sakte to yahan se one baro aata hai jab one yahan pe baro aata hai it become one zero aapko pata hai binary mein one zero two ke barabar hota hai theek hai na 
सही है सो so, इस वन जीरो से फिर फर्दर बारो यहां पे आता है जब वन जीरो से बारो यहां पे आता है तो यहां पे वन रह जाता है ठीक है अब ये वन जीरो हो जाता है वन जीरो माइनस वन यू गेट वन यहां पे वन रह गया वन माइनस जीरो वन ये वन हमने बारो ले लिया था तो यहां पे तो जीरो है तो बाकी इस ऑपरेशन इसी तरह ही है इज इट क्लियर ये सर ओके सर थैंक यू सॉरी आई बी टिंग फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम ऑन स्मॉलर थिंग्स बट Uh, I expect you to understand these things. ये binary arithmetic आप लोगों ने DLD में पढ़े हैं actually, ठीक है ना? काफी extensively. Let's move on. Next is SBBB. It actually means subtract the contents of register B and the borrow, not just the contents of register B, but also the borrow. ठीक है? यहाँ पे M भी हो सकता था, register B भी हो सकता है, C भी हो सकता है, कोई भी register हो सकता है. Now how it works? लेट से हमारे पास इनिशियली रजिस्टर ए में वैल्यू है फोर जीरो एच रजिस्टर बी में वैल्यू है टू जीरो एच एंड दीज आर द स्टेटस इज ऑफ फोर फ्लैक्स राइट नो वट हैपन्स वंस दिस इंस्ट्रक्शन इज एग्जीक्यूटेड रजिस्टर ए से ये टू जीरो एच भी सब्ट्रैक्ट होगा और ये केरी भी सब्ट्रैक्ट होगा नो हाउ डज दैट वर्क ए में क्या वैल्यू है फोर जीरो दिस इज फोर दिस इज जीरो बी में क्या वैल्यू है टू जीरो दिस इज टू दिस इज जीरो राइट केरी की क्या वैल्यू है वन सो so, उसको भी यहां पे ले आए सो so, इससे ये और ये दोनों नंबर दे आर गेटिंग गोइंग टू बी सब्जेक्टेड ठीक है सो व्हाट्स गोना हैपन अगेन द सेम प्रोसेस बारो 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 अल्टीमेटली एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी सब्जेक्टेड सो दिस इज योर फाइनल रिजल्ट राइट व्हेन यू सब्जेक्ट दीस टू नंबर फ्रॉम दिस नंबर दिस इज योर फाइनल रिजल्ट सो रजिस्टर ए इज गोइंग टू हैव वन f this is one the higher byte and the lower one is f so this is your result register b is not going to be affected by this particular instruction only the results in register a is going to change right flakes see this last bit is zero so s is zero the result is non zero so z is zero right there was a borrow from the first digit to the second digit so auxiliary carry is one right also parity check out the number of ones 1 2 3 4 5 there are five ones out there that means odd number so the value of p is zero and then was there any borrow from outside now so the value of cy is zero let me repeat this whole thing again sbbb mean subtract the contents of register b and the carry from the accumulator so once this instruction is executed the value b and c is going to be subtracted and you get this result okay this result is equivalent to 1 fh and now check out compare what flags are affected this bit is zero so s is zero the result is non zero so z is zero auxiliary carry was there any borrow from the higher byte higher number to the lower digit yes there was a borrow from higher digit to lower digit so the value of ac is 1 How many ones are there in the result? Five means the value of p is going to be zero. Was there carry from or borrow from outside? No, this number was big enough, so there was no borrow from outside. The value of c is going to be zero. If you check out initial value of c was one, no, it is zero. It doesn't mean that it was subtracted and it becomes zero. No, this is the reflection of your final results, right? So was there any borrow during the process from outside? no next is sui 13h it means subtract this value from accumulator simple subtraction of this number from the contents of accumulator let's say accumulator is having 05 this is the case remember when you mentioned that when a larger number is subtracted from a smaller number so see 13h is a larger number 05h is a smaller number So this instruction is actually subtracting a bigger number from a smaller number. These are the initial status of our flags. Now see this number. I wrote it here: zero 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 one zero one, which is representing zero five, and one three h is representing like this, right? Now see in this particular case, this is our result. Now how this result is actually obtained? We have to take a borrow from outside, then borrow is shifted here, here, here. here here 
right? And ultimately here, one minus one, zero. One, zero minus one, one. Then this one, right? There was a borrow. So again, it was one, zero, then it becomes zero, right? So it can subtract this. Initially, the borrow is shifted from here and then later on from the outside because the initial number is five and we are subtracting three from it. So five minus three, you get two. In here, we are trying to subtract one from zero. So you need a borrow, one, zero, then shift it to here, one, zero, shift it to here, one, zero, shift it to here, one, zero. So one, zero minus one, one. One minus zero, one. One minus zero, one. One minus zero, one. This is your result. So in this case, we actually borrowed one number from outside. And your result is F2H, right? What flags are affected? Carry is going to be affected because we took a borrow. The result, this number is one. That means it's a negative number. The result is non-zero, so zero flag is zero. Auxiliary carry, was there any borrow from this one to this? No, so AC is zero. Number of ones, one, two, three, four, five. Five is an odd number, so the value of P is going to be zero. Let me repeat this whole thing again. SUI 13H actually subtra means subtract this value from the contents of accumulator. The contents of accumulator is zero, five H, right? A smaller number, so you're trying to subtract a larger number from a smaller number, right? So when you try to do that, what happens is that you will need a borrow. So the borrow is actually shifted here, here, here to ultimately make sure that this number is subtracted from this. And this is your result. You, we all know that when we subtract one from zero, it will become one, one, one. It become F, right? So this is the result. Next is SBI 13H. In this case, means subtract this number plus the borrow from the contents of accumulator. So what happens, let's say the contents of accumulator is 18H, right? Like in this case. So, and the value of the carry is, let's say one. So once this instruction is executed, so what do we have? 18H, which is this number. This is one, this is eight. And the, the contents to be subtracted is one, three. This is one, this is three. And then we add this carry in here. So these two numbers are going to be subtracted from this number. So once it's done, your result is 0, 4H, which will be the result in your accumulator. So from 1, 8H, we subtract 1, 3H and carry. So the result is 0, 4H. Now let's see what flags are affected. This number is 0, S is 0. The result is non-zero, so 0 flag is 0. There was no borrow from the first digit to the second digit. Auxiliary carry is 0. The number of ones is odd, so P is zero. Was there any borrow from outside? No, the value of CY is zero. So this is SBAI. In this case, we actually subtract the contents are specified in the instruction and the carry from the accumulator. And the result is actually stored in the accumulator, right? So this is again a two byte instruction and a subtraction operation. Next is. Excuse me, sir. Sir. G, please. Sir, Kiri, zero view or something. Ah, so you have zero. zero. Hoga. Okay, sir. Thanks. Next is increment a register. See, except carry flag, all flags are affected depending upon the result. Except carry. Carry is not affected, the rest are affected by this instruction. Keep this thing in mind, right? Arithmetic. Operation say sare flags effect hote te. Increment say carry ke alawa sare flag effect hote. Okay? What it actually does. Let's say this is the contents of register E, for instance, 1CH. Once this instruction is executed, this is going to be 1DH. That means it is incremented by 1. Simple increment operation, it increment the specified content by 1 number. DCRM. Again, it's a decrement operation. It can be for a register. It can be for a memory, right? But when we specify the memory, again, except carry flag, all flags are affected, right? Depending upon the results. Now, let's say this is the contents of HL. Every time you see M, you have to look for the address. Where is the address? It is in register HL. Now, see, what do what value we have at this location, 8500H? It is 08H. So once this instruction is executed, 
this 0 8 h is going to be decremented by 1 and the result is going to be 0 7 in here so once this instruction is executed what's going to happen is that only this particular value is going to be changed so this is a simple decrement operation but since we specified memory so we have to look for the memory where is the memory 8500 h in here what is the value at that memory location 0 8 h what we want to do with it? We want to decrement it. So it's going to be decremented and the result is going to be 0, 0,7H, right? So this is a simple yes. decrement operation. Sir, excuse me, sir. Sir, if it's 0, we can also decrement it. So if we take 12 or carry, it can be a carry effect. No, it can't be a carry effect. If we decrement the value of 0 by 1, it will be FF. If you decrement 0, so wo ff ho jata hai it yes. become all ones right okay simple binary operation hai lekin carry is effect nahi hota okay See? thank you sir. okay next is inx d so this is for previously humne discuss kiya this is for 8 bit number inx is used for incrementing a 16 bit number yahan pe register pairs specify hote hain acha isse koi bhi flag effect nahi hota kyun ये जो 16 बिट जितना भी ऑपरेशन है ये सारे इंक्रीमेंट डिक्रीमेंट 16 बिट रजिस्टर थे उसमें होते हैं दीज आर नॉट एएलयू ऑपरेशन जो काम एएलयू नहीं करता तो उससे फ्लैग्स बिल्कुल नहीं इफेक्ट होते ठीक है अरिथमेटिक एंड लॉजिक यूनिट जो है दैट इज 8 बिट इन केस ऑफ 8085 सो एनएक्स डी इज अ 16 बिट ऑपरेशन व्हाट इट डस इट टेक्स द कंटेंट्स ऑफ रजिस्टर डीई एंड इंक्रीमेंट इट बाय 1 नो लेट्स सी व्हाट हैपन this is the value in register DE. So A103H. It's a 16 bit number, right? So when you increment it, what's going to happen? It will become A104. So it takes the whole thing as a single number and increment it to this thing. Simple increment operation. But it considers the whole thing as a single number, right? So it's a 16 bit increment operation. Similarly, we have DCXH. It's a decrement operation for 16 bit. So when we say DCX H, it actually considering H as HL, not simply H. So what's going to happen? Let's say this is the contents of register HL, FFFH. So when you decrement it, it's going to come out to FFEH. It will decrement by 1. So it will take HL as a single 8, 16 bit number and decrement the whole number by one and this is going to be the result so it's again none of the flag is going to be affected by this operation next is sir g excel kar sakta hu g g please please sir pichli dafa hl mein jo hamare sath jo value tha wo aapne address consider kiya memory mein aap gaye aur ab is bar mein aapne wo data consider kiya ye kis tarah acha ye main kuch nahi karta बात ये होती है जो इंस्ट्रक्शन होता है यू हैव टू लुक एट इट अगर आपके इंस्ट्रक्शन में एम लिखा हुआ है ठीक है ना लेट्स गो बैक टू दैट इंस्ट्रक्शन यहां पे क्या लिखा हुआ है एम तो एम का मतलब है कि एचएल में जो वैल्यू है उसको एज ए एड्रेस कंसीडर करें इज इट ओके सर इंस्ट्रक्शन से पता चल जाता है जब आपके पास एम हो ना तो इसका मतलब है एचएल एज ए एड्रेस के तौर पे काम करता है ठीक है अब यहां पे थैंक यू हम HL को ले रहे हैं as a data, ठीक है ना? In this instruction, HL is acting as a data. So हम DCX operation कर रहे हैं, तो ये इसको decrement करेगा. तो ये इसको as it is उठा के उसको decrement करता है. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Next is decimally adjust accumulator. Normally, like we discussed earlier on. The processor perform binary operation. So if you want to use the processor for decimal operation, decimal addition, so usko decimally adjust karna padta hai final results ko. DA is the instruction used for it. Okay. For instance, this is the value in register A. Now see, this number is not a decimal number. It is a binary number. 6CH is in fact, you would say it's a hex number, but hex numbers are actually only representing binary number, right? They don't exist in real. They are only representation of binary number. So if you want to see the decimal result, so what you do, you put
put this instruction. It's a one byte instruction. It will adjust it and it will show you the decimal result. 72H. No, this is not 72H. This is actually 72, which is from this 6C is equivalent to 72 once it is decimally adjusted. Once we do some programming, you will see the importance of DAA, right? So what actually happens? It actually add 6 to the final result to obtain this. Why it add 6? There are two conditions when you need DA. One, when you get an alpha, alphabetic number inside, like A, B, C, right? Then you have to add 6. R, when you get an auxiliary carry during the addition. These are the two cases where you need DAA to decimally adjust the results. <coughs> we'll discuss it more in the programming. For now, you just need to remember if you want to transform your results from uh, hexadecimal number to decimal numbers, you need to use DAA as an instruction. Let's move on. Next. So after the result, see, it will transform it into 72. Next is logical instructions. What logical instructions we have? We have AND, we have R, we have XR, we have complement, we have compare, we have rotate. We have rotate uh, through carry and we have, we have rotate all right. I mean, considering carry as a part of the instruction as well. So again, it is with register memory or with the 8-bit data. It is either with register and memory or with the 8-bit data. Similarly, XR can be with a register or with memory. Remember, this instruction, what it does, it and R, XR, the corresponding register, memory, or data with the accumulator and store the final results in the accumulator. So these instructions, one of the register is always accumulator. And remember, the results are always stored in the accumulator. Similarly, when you say CMA, complement accumulator, it is actually a once complement instruction. It complement all the bits, convert zeros to ones and ones to zeros. Similarly, compare, when you use the compare instruction, it compare the contents of accumulator with the corresponding register or the contents of a memory location. Or you can have CPI, which means compare the contents of accumulator with an 8-bit data. Similarly, when you perform rotate operation, either towards left or right, it is actually performed on the accumulator. Let's go through the example, and you will see that how they actually work. First, Sir, I'm going to explain every instruction one by one now. You still have a question? Sir, the logical instructions, which one can you play with? This is the whole thing that you have to write down. You have to write down which one can you play Right? Sign, zero, P flags are affected during the execution of end instruction. Carry and auxiliary flag is always like this. Right? Clear, sir. OK. You do understand that yes, there is no possibility of having any carry from the logical operation. Is there? No, sir. No, sir. And there is no possibility of auxiliary carry also during the logical operation. No, sir. Handling so any of them. Ah, so naturally, on those two are not affected. The rest of them are affected. OK? So let's discuss them one, one at a time. A and A, C mean in the contents of accumulator with register C. Now let's say accumulator is having value 62H and C, register C is having value 4AH. And let's say these are the flag statuses before we execute this instruction. So how do they look like in binary? This is 6, this is 2. This is 4, this is A, right? So n mean 0, 0, 0. 1, 1 will produce 1. 0, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0. So if they are 1, 1 only, then it will produce some result. So you see, if there are 1, 1, it produce 1. If there is 1, 1, it produce 1. This is simple end operation. And the result is 4, n, 2. So after the execution of the instruction, the contents of accumulator is going to be 42H. Remember, register C is not affected. Sign flag. See, zero. 
the result is non-zero, so zero flag. Like they explicitly specified that the after the execution of this logical operation, these two are going to have these values. So this is internally pre-programmed thing. It has nothing to do with carry. There is no carry or auxiliary carry. So, but yes, once the instruction is executed, this is usually their status. And then check out the number of ones in the result, one, two, it's even. So the value of P is one in this case, right? This is end operation. It in the contents of accumulator with register C, and the result is stored in register A. This is how bitwise end is performed, and the corresponding flags are affected. Similarly, we have A and I with an 8-bit data. So in this case, the contents of accumulator is going to be ended with the specified data, which is 15H in this case. So let's say the contents of accumulator is 62H, right? And these are the flags before the execution of the instruction. So let's check out in binary what happens. This is 6, this is 2, and this is 1, and this is 5. So this 15H is represented by this. This 62H is represented by this. And then bit by bit ending produce this results. So in this case, the result is 0. So the, for the first time, you will see that 0 flag is 1. The result is 0, so 0 flag is 1. This is 0, sign flag is 0. Auxiliary carry and carry flag, like mentioned earlier on, will take these statuses. And there is no one, so that means consider as even. So p value is 1 in this case. So this simple immediate instruction, 2-byte instruction, it ends the contents of accumulator with the specified data, and the result is actually stored in the accumulator. Next is R. So it's a similar thing. Again, this is the case when you are Ring. All the flags are affected, right? And the result of CY and AC is going to be 0, 0. Now, why this is happening, I don't know. This is explicitly specified that when this processor performs this operation, these are going to be the results, right? So this has, there is no logical explanation to it. This is how it is supposed to work, right? This is an indication that whether it is working fine or it is working incorrect. So when you perform an R operation, Let's say the contents of accumulator is 62A, the contents of register C is 4A, and these are our initial flags. Now, right, let's write down these two in the form of binary. You do understand R, right? If any of the number is 1, the result is going to be 1. So see, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0. So the result is 6A. So after the execution of this instruction, your result is going to be 6AH. The contents of register C is again not affected by this instruction. Again, the flags, S is 0 because this value is 0. Z is 0 because the result is Yes, not. sir. And auxiliary carry and carry is going to take these two values as specified. The number of ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, they are even. So the value of P is going to be 1. It's a simple R, logic R operation between register A and C. You see, this is the binary Ring, and the result is stored in the accumulator, and this is the impact on the flex. Let's move on. Next is Ring with the immediate data. Now, in this case, the data is specified rather than the register. So let's say again, the contents of accumulator is 62H. We write them down in the form of binary. We write 15H in the form of binary, and we'll R them. So 0 and 1 produce 1. 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, produce 0, 0, 1, 1. And so we got this result. This is 7, this is 7. So the result is 7, 7H, seven right? Now check out this bit. This is 0, S is 0. The result is non-zero, so your 0 flag is 0. Auxiliary carry and carry is going to take the same 0, 0 value. The number of 1s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They are even, so the value of P is 1. Simple Ring operation, two byte instruction. It R the specified data with the contents of accumulator and store the results in the accumulator. And these are the flags affected. This is the binary operation done between two registers. Next is exclusive R, right? In exclusive R, if the two bits are unequal, if the two bits are not same, only then the result is going to be one. That is the exclusive R thing, right? So in this, we specify, you, 
XR the contents of accumulator with the specified register and store the results in the accumulator again. So let's say this is the contents of register A. Let's say these are the contents of register E. And let's say these are the flex statuses, right? Again, the same thing. S, Z, P flags are affected during the execution of instruction. And C, Y, and A, C will have 0, 0 value, right? Now, see, E, E. E is represented by this. E is represented by this. 5A, this is 5, this is A. Now, in exclusive R, if the two bits are equal, the result is 0. If the two bits are not, the result is 1. If two bits are equal, 0. Unequal, 1. Unequal, 1. Equal, 0. Unequal, 1. So we get a result. Now, this is B and this is 4. So our result after the execution of this instruction is B4. And in E, the contents is not affected. Again, this bit is 1. Now, it did, does say that it changes this value. So I just need to change it in the slide, actually, the final slide. This is incorrect. It has to be 1, OK? The value of s is affected by it. This is 1. So this s value has to be 1. This is one small error in this. So kindly correct it with you in the final slide that I've uploaded. It. The final result is non-zero, so z is 0. Auxiliary carry and carry is supposed to have zero values. And the number of ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, they are even. So the value of p is 1. Let me just go through this slide again. Exclusive R, I mean, exclusive R in the contents of accumulator with register E. So once they are exclusive R, the result is stored in register A. So it's done bitwise, and the final result is here. These are the flags affected by your results. XR. I18H. In this case, we specify the number with which we want to exclusive are the contents of the accumulator. Again, the result is stored in the accumulator. So in this case, the contents of register A is specified, which is C3H, and it is exclusive R. So this is C, this is 3, and 18. This is 1, this is 8. So when you exclusive R it, they are not equal 1, 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, 1, 1. So the final result, this is D and B. DBH is the final result. Again, there is this small error. This S value has to be 1. Here it is rep represented as 1, so this should be 1. The result is non-zero, so the value of that is 0. Right. Similarly, the number of ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, is even, so the value of P is 1. The same exclusive R operation is a 2-byte instruction. The only difference is, in the previous case, we had a register with which we were kind of exclusive R. -ing. In this case, we specify the number with which we perform the exclusive R operation. And the results is actually stored in the accumulator, as specified in here. OK, next is complement accumulator. It's a simple instruction which complement all the bits in accumulator, transform zeros to ones and ones to zero. It doesn't affect any flag. Keep this thing in mind. This is the only instruction which doesn't affect any of the flag. Now, how does it work? Let's say this is the value of accumulator before the execution of the instruction. Once the instruction is executed, these are the values in binary. So like I said, it is one's complement operation. So it changed zeros to ones and ones to zero. See, change zeros to ones and ones to zero. So this is your result, which is six, five. So your final result is six, five H after the execution of instruction. It's a one byte instruction. And what it does is that it complements all the numbers, all 8-bit numbers. It changes zeros to ones and ones to zero. And this is the result. Next is compare instruction. Compare is comparing the contents of accumulator with a specified register. Now, there are three possibilities in this case. Either the given number is lesser than the value of accumulator, or it is greater than, or the two are equal, right? So there are three possibilities when you compare two numbers. In this case, 
one of the register is accumulator and the other one is actually specified. In this case, it is register L. So let's say the contents of accumulator is 45H and the contents of register L is 75H. With this instruction, usually all the fly flags are affected, but we have to look for these two, Z flag and carry flag, right? Because when we execute this, if the value of A is less than 75H, then Z is going to be zero and CY is going to be one, right? If the value of A is greater than L, then they are both going to be zero. If the A value of A and L are equal, then Z is going to be one and CY is going to be zero. So these are the three possibilities. Let me repeat again. If the value of accumulator is less than L, then CY is going to be one, Z is going to be zero. If they are equal, Z is going to be one, CY is going to be zero. If the given value is greater than this value, then they are both going to be equal to zero. Now in this case, if you see the contents of accumulator is less than the contents of L, so the carry is one and Z leg is zero. So from this, we get to know whether the given number, the number that we are comparing with is greater than or lesser than the contents of accumulator, right? So there are three possibilities. We keep on checking these flags to get to know whether the given number is lesser than, equal to, or greater than the specified number. Similarly, CPI 45H, in this case, we specify, we check that whether the contents of accumulator is equal to, lesser than, or greater than the specified number. In the previous case, we have to look for the contents of the register. In this case, we specify, we check directly with a specific number. So let's say the contents of accumulator is 62H. It is greater than this number. So the result is going to be the same, ZE0 and CY0, like as specified in here. Once we execute the instruction, this is going to look like this, right? So this is, these are the two examples of compare instructions. Next is rotate. There are four rotate instructions. Two are for rotating the contents towards left and two are for rotating the contents towards right. Now let's say the contents of the carry is one and the contents of accumulator is 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, right? Before the execution of the instruction, these are the contents. We are talking about rotate left carry. Now how does it work? It's going to shift everything towards left, right? So what's going to happen? The first bit is going to be transferred to the carry, shifting towards left. Then the same bit is going to go to the first location. This higher bit is going to go to carry and to the first location. And all these bits are going to be shifted towards left. One bit. This is going to go here. This is going to go here. This is going to go here. So all of them, see, they are shifted. They are all shifted by one. This is shifting towards left. The last bit towards the carry, the last bit towards the first location, and all these bits shifted like this. See, this one is gone here. See, they are all shifted. This is rotating towards left. Next is rotating towards right, which is the opposite of the previous one. Again, let's say this is the contents of the carry, and this is the contents of accumulator. So see how does it work, right? Shifting towards right. So what's going to happen, all the bits, all these bits are actually shifted towards right. And what happens to this one? This is going to go here, and the same bit is going to go here. See, this is going to go here, and the same one is going to go towards the carry, right? So it's going to be shifted here. OK, so this is rotating towards right. All the bits are shifted towards right, and the last one is going to go to this place into the first place, like A specified in here. Next one, rotate all left. Now, you need to understand the difference between the previous rotate and this one. Now, look at it carefully. Let's say this is the contents of the carry flag, and this is the contents of accumulator. Now, in this case, what happens? This bit go here, similar to what happens previously. 
the only thing that is going to shift is whatever here is going to go here right let's go to the previous case in this case this bit shift here and the same bit shift here but in ral it is different in this case this final bit is going to go here and the carry is going to go to the first place see this bit go here right so the carry become one and the carry value is going to go to the first location right and all the rest of the bits are going to shift towards left one position at a time see all the remaining bits are actually shifted one bit at a time this is ral next rar rotate all towards right in this case everything is going to be shifting towards right this bit is going to go to carry and the carry is going to go here now see what happens see the carry is going to go here right and all see this is going to go to carry and all the rest of the bits are shifted towards right one bit at a time see these are the bits which are shifted towards right so the final one is gone here and the carry is gone here so this is the final result so this these are the rotate instruction the four rotate instructions that we have in 885 microprocessor next is branching instruction branching actually changes the normal execution of a program right it there are two possibilities yes, one is yes sir copy hai ya break lete hain fir aate hain kidhar jana hai aap logo ne do you want to stop in here and uh, we start the next week from here onward yes sir like it's yes, almost it's, it's almost yes, two hours yes sir ye bahut hai sir sir ya 10 minute ka break le le fir start kare jaise aapki marzi par two hour lagatar hum baithe hain to tak jata hai acha chale is tarah karte hain we will uh, let let me just stop the recording uh, let's see if i can stop the recording Okay. Uh, I don't know if I have that option. Yeah.